In Spanish-speaking countries such as those within Latin America, most of the people believe that Domingo is the seventh or last day of the week. However, as you will soon see, in many of these countries, the majority of their calendars have Domingo on the first day, not the seventh day of the week. And when it comes to the meaning of Domingo, most of the people believe that Domingo means Sunday or the biblical Lord's Day. But is that what it really means? If we look at the definition shown here for the word Domingo, we see that Domingo comes from an assortment of Latin words such as dominion, domination, dominator, to be lord and master of, and to be mastered. And though some modern dictionaries associate Domingo with Sunday, often called the Lord's Day, the original meanings of the words from which Domingo has been derived do not appear to have any direct association with the biblical Lord's Day or with any other particular day of the week. However, when the Catholic Church placed the title of Domingo on the Day of the Sun, which is also her day of worship, Domingo then became associated with Sun Day worship. Consequently, when the Latin definitions of Domingo were combined with its placement on Sunday by the Catholic Church, the title of Domingo represented both Sunday worship and domination or lordship by the Roman Catholic Church. This conclusion may be difficult for some to assimilate, so we will take a brief look at another representation or symbol which has basically the same dual application as Domingo. From its infancy, the Roman Catholic Church has used the symbol of the cross and especially the Latin cross as her mark of authority, conquest, domination, and rulership. The cross, which since ancient times has been one of the most important symbols or emblems of the sun and sun worship, is also the most important of Catholic emblems, symbolizing the church's holy faith. So it is evident that both the Mingo and the Latin cross represent the sun worship as well as domination by the Catholic Church. And even though supposed authentic and reliable sources claim that Domingo is the biblical Lord's Day and that the Latin cross represents Jesus Christ, does that make it so? Isn't the Christian's most authentic and reliable source of information supposed to be the Bible? The fact remains that according to the Bible, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. In other words, the Lord's Day is the seventh day of creation week, or the Sabbath. And concerning a cross representing Jesus Christ or his followers, in Exodus chapter 24 through 6, along with comments on the second commandment in Deuteronomy chapter 4, it is very plain that God's followers are not to make any physical symbol to represent him. This is why, biblically, the cross cannot be a representation of Jesus Christ, any more than Domingo is a representation of the biblical Lord's Day, the seventh-day Sabbath. Apparently, then, Domingo is only appropriate as the title of a non-biblical worship day and a non-biblical Lord. Unfortunately, Domingo is not the only word in Latin America's weekly cycle that has been misrepresented and therefore misunderstood. It seems that the majority of the people think that the Spanish word sábado means Saturday and that it is the name for the sixth day of the week. However, the word sábado has not been derived from Saturnus, nor does it mean Saturday. The word sabato traces its roots back to sabbatum in Latin, sabbaton in Greek, and shabbat in Hebrew, which are words or titles used in those languages for the biblical Lord's Day, the seventh day Sabbath of creation week. And so assigning the title of sabato to the sixth day or to any day other than the seventh day of the week creates a direct contradiction to the true meaning of sabato and its divine placement on the seventh day. And though not all Spanish dictionaries agree, the majority of full-size Spanish dictionaries clearly identify Domingo as the title for the first day and Sabado as the title for the last day of the week. Therefore, in Spanish-speaking countries like Chile, where most calendars place Domingo on the seventh day of the week, 
There are obvious contradictions that exist between most of the country's calendars and the majority of the authentic full-size Spanish dictionaries regarding what day is actually the seventh day of the week. On the other hand, in countries such as Argentina, Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, it seems that the confusion that exists over what is the correct last day of the week is not so much the result of an improper order of the weekly cycle as it is the religious teachings and concepts that subliminally permeate these societies. From random surveys taken in these five countries, it is estimated that approximately 75 to 85 percent of their calendars place Sabado on the seventh day of the week. Yet at the same time, more than 90 percent of the general populace surveyed thought that Domingo was the last day of the week. It is sad that in these cultures, the destruction of discernment has been so powerful that many of the people can be looking at two different calendars, which are side by side, one with Domingo on the seventh day and the other with Sabado as the seventh day, and their minds will literally register both calendars as having Domingo as the last day of the week. After the evidence has been clearly pointed out, some of the people are able to see the difference. But incredible as it may seem, there are those who never do recognize the truth. Psychologically, this problem with discernment is no less serious than a person being incapable of recognizing or understanding the difference in the value between a $1 bill and a $100 bill. How is it possible that intelligent people can have so much difficulty in discerning simple truth from error? especially when it's right in front of their eyes. All too often, if blatant, erroneous contradictions are received as the truth within one's home, religion, or society, the result will be that the greater the contradiction or deception accepted, the greater will be the individual's inability to discern truth from error or to love the truth when it is pointed out. Unlike in the United States, the posting of business hours does not seem to play a significant role in the conditioning of these societies to accept Sunday as the seventh day of the week. So, what is bringing about this powerful yet unrecognized confusion in the Spanish-speaking countries? Upon inquiry of South and Central Americans, there are basically two influencing factors that the general populace has given concerning why people think Sunday is the last day of the week. The first reason is called the work week, which it is claimed begins with Monday and ends with Sunday. The second and most common reason given is that it is as a result of the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church. Initially, it may seem hard for some to believe that the Roman Catholic Church is teaching that Sunday is the seventh day of the week, because traditionally, she has generally taught that Sunday is the first day of the week. Nevertheless, the following quotations are some examples of how the Roman Catholic Church is indeed subtly teaching not only the concept that Sunday is the seventh day, but also that Sunday is the seventh day Sabbath. If you are one of those Catholics that dedicate Sunday to outings, eating out, going shopping, or to the movies, and the last thing you think about is going to Mass or dedicating some time to God, you are, according to Pope John Paul II, in grave sin. This was stated clearly yesterday by the maximum authority of the Catholic Church in a call to a religious revindication of this day of the week, the same one used by God, according to Genesis, to rest after taking six days to construct the world. From this Columbia newspaper article, we find the claim that Sunday is the same rest day as the seventh day of creation week. But was the journalist who wrote this newspaper article simply confused concerning what day of the week the Catholic Church's maximum authority was actually referring to? This question is answered in Pope John Paul II's Dias Domini, where the following statements may be found. In the first place, therefore, Sunday is the day of rest because it is the day blessed by God and made holy by Him set apart from the other days to be, among all of them, the Lord's day. Therefore, if God sanctifies the seventh day with a special blessing and makes it his day par excellence, this must be understood within the deep dynamic of the dialogue of the covenant, indeed, the dialogue of marriage. 
By contrast, the Sabbath's position as the seventh day of the week suggests for the Lord's Day a complementary symbolism, much loved by the fathers. Sunday is not only the first day, it is also the eighth day. We see here that while the Roman Catholic Church is officially teaching that her Lord's Day or Sunday is the first day and even the eighth day of the week, she is also subtly teaching that Sunday is the seventh day of the week. Let's continue now with Dias Domini. More than a replacement for the Sabbath, therefore, Sunday is its fulfillment, and in a certain sense, its extension and full expression in the ordered unfolding of the history of salvation, which reaches its culmination in Christ. Christ came to accomplish a new exodus, to restore freedom to the oppressed. He performed many healings on the Sabbath, certainly not to violate the Lord's Day, but to reveal its full meaning. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Opposing the excessively legalistic interpretation of some of his contemporaries and developing the true meaning of the biblical Sabbath, Jesus, as Lord of the Sabbath, restores to the Sabbath observance its liberating character, carefully safeguarding the rights of God and the rights of man. This is why Christians, called as they are to proclaim the liberation won by the blood of Christ, felt that they had the authority to transfer the meaning of the Sabbath to the day of the resurrection. Notice that both the biblical seventh day Sabbath and the Catholic Church's Lord's Day or Sunday are represented as being exactly the same day. Also notice that when the Pope is speaking of transferring the sanctity of the Sabbath from the seventh day Sabbath to Sunday, no reference is given of where Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Sabbath, commanded that Sunday should be the new and improved Seventh-day Sabbath. We find instead that the transfer has been attempted by people whom the Pope claimed were Christians, who felt they had the authority to transfer the meaning of the Sabbath to the day of the resurrection. Now, let's see what the Catechism of the Catholic Church has to say concerning this topic. The third commandment of the Decalogue recalls the holiness of the Sabbath. The seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. In speaking of the Sabbath, Scripture recalls creation. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Scripture also reveals in the Lord's Day a memorial of Israel's liberation from bondage in Egypt. God's action is the model for human action. If God rested and was refreshed on the seventh day, man too ought to rest and should let others, especially the poor, be refreshed. Just as in Pope John Paul II's Dias Domini, the Catholic Church's catechism is teaching that her Lord's Day or Sunday is in actuality God's Lord's Day, the seventh day Sabbath. Doubleday is the name of the publishing company that printed the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And a Doubleday is just what we find the Catholic Church's Catechism is trying to make out of God's Sabbath. It is attempting to blend God's seventh day Sabbath with Sunday, her Sabbath day into one day, Sunday, the seventh day Sabbath. Some may wonder how it is possible that Roman Catholics could accept this kind of confused teaching, but fear can do amazing things to the mind, especially when they hear statements like the following from Joseph Ratzinger, the former head of the CDF or the modern Roman Inquisition, and now the head of the entire papacy with the title of Pope Benedict XVI. One can only be a Christian in the church, not beside the church. Is it any wonder that many find that they are confused concerning what day is the true seventh day Sabbath, and at the same time are afraid to question what they have been taught when confronted with the plain truth as revealed in their calendars, the majority of their dictionaries, and the Bible? Some may think that the promotion of Sunday as the seventh day of the week is a rather recent development, but as you may have already guessed, it is not.